people of the internet, my name is Johnny and welcome back to another Game Theory Reaction video. I'm a couple days late on this because my computer just would not turn on and I've been having so many technical issues with it, eventually we just had to wipe it. It kept all my personal files thankfully, but I had to re-download everything so if OBS is a little bit weird, I apologize. It should be good though. So I'm sorry that I'm pretty late. I think I'm only two days late to this, which isn't too bad, but you know, I, I don't normally like to be this late. <laughs> so this episode is a continuation of the previous one where we talked about the fetch book. And I'm pretty sure this is Matt talking about psychic friend Fredbear now. And according to people on the Reddit, this is a pretty interesting theory video. So. I'm not gonna waste any more time, and let's hop into it. Okay, I think we're all ready. Let's hop into it. The Body Snatchers. He's your buddy, when your brother is a jerk, he's your pal. Is this the, the full song of Psychic Friend Fredbear now? When you go get a bite, at least until the sixth night. He's here, he's, he's there, there, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. Who, Who are you gonna, gonna call? call? Psychic, Psychic Friend Fredbear. Fredbear. I like that. He's a flower. Oh, it's not done. For reasons still unknown, and he stalks you. On your way back home, he makes a promise Creepy. that throws off all the lore. Seriously, Scott, what is this line for? And is it supposed to be in a slightly different yellow font here? Are you oh. meaning this to be figurative or literal? Because if it's literal, is it the you puppet are golden a Freddy? I don't know. Can of worms. He's here, he's there, he's everywhere. Who are you gonna call? Psychic friend Fred Bear. Now, how long until someone we mixes he's here, this he's there, he's that's the question who are you gonna call psychic friend Fred bear oh no no psychic friend Fred bear turn it up hello internet welcome to game theory where i start off today with a disclaimer <clears throat> uh -oh. warning in entering this video and honestly all of my theories you are entering a zone of speculation where any ideas a game of theory, the you could say. More problems than it creates. Answers more questions than it raises. Or ties together dangling pieces of evidence in a narratively satisfying way. Am I trying to solve the lore? Yes. Am I doing it by asking really extreme over-the-top questions, looking into very yeah. specific details way too closely, Sometimes. and more often than not drawing connections between concepts that probably aren't connected at all? Absolutely yes. Side effects of entering the theory zone may include a blown mind, total and utter confusion, a deeper appreciation of your favorite franchises, fun stories to share with friends, a head full of random factoids that will at no point aid you in life, and disillusionment about human existence and our own place in the universe. Enter at your own risk. Disclaimers aside, night terrors, night sweats. A, needle to thread. a good theory is one that has enough evidence to support it, but not so much evidence Where's that it's going with this? a known fact. It requires extrapolation, Glitchy. thinking beyond just the stuff that we're man behind the slot. So far past that that you're overreaching or making oh, baseless boy. claims. And all of that oh, while boy. still maintaining a satisfying story. A story that stays true to the franchise that you're talking about while not being afraid to take that known story in new, often riskier uh. directions. In a lot of ways, theory crafting is like writing fan fiction, just, you know, with more evidence and uh, less aggressive cuddling. Wait, where is this go? <laughs> aggressive cuddling than some of the fan fictions I've been exposed to over the years. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the reason <laughs> I say all of this right now is that okay. the theory is... <sighs> I put it. it it's one of the stretchier ones like there are some theories okay. that are solid and there's some really strong evidence in the game and it's supported by stuff that's been said by the developers or creators then there are others that require a bit more creative license where the connections are there but they might require you to squint a little bit or just you know have fun with it and go along for the ride and this episode okay. is one of those theories because today we're once again diving into the world of Fetch. Book yes. two of the Fazbear Fright series. You see, last time Doesn't I mentioned 135 Fetch come out in May? was recently released and it is, um, well, Not sure. if I'm being honest, it feels much less connected to the series than the first one. The connections to the main lore are definitely a bit shakier. This one, meanwhile, introduces us to a lot of new things. A smartphone-powered animatronic dog named Fetch. Tiny, free-roaming versions <laughs> of Freddy Fazbear called Lonely Freddy. And that felt weird to me. Every story of the first book felt very connected to established characters okay. from old bunny suits to shape-shifting baby to funtime freddy so why was this one the second book doing so many new things it felt like a pretty extreme tonal shift especially considering scott had just look. posted about how these look books at the books to fill in things from the, from the past. past so then i thought about it 
and I considered what blanks from the past this odd collection of stories might be trying to fill. Yes, the plus play. trap chasers. There's a chance that one Fucking of the those guys. conclusions in this book is actually something that we've known about for a long time. An oddball character that's confused us and stymied the end of skeleton? for years. I believe that there's a chance, a chance that Fetch's Lonely Freddies may actually be the real identity oh, of boy. FNAF 4's psychic friend Fredbear. You remember oh, that plush doll okay. from FNAF 4 with the living eyes um, that track your movements as you walk around the room that's definitely a stretch disguised itself as a flower the thing that could actually read the crying child's innermost thoughts i think that guy was a type of lonely freddy doll but to truly understand why okay. i think these two are connected let's begin with lonely freddy's story to quickly yeah the story in a bit more detail than i did last time because now the details actually matter for the theory alec is an angry teenager who's upset that his younger Grr. sister hazel gets all of their parents love and affection because she's practically perfect in every way so when Hazel just out of the blue starts being overly nice to Alec and wants to join him in making their parents miserable. He doesn't trust her. He suspects mm. that she's up to something. And I so he concocts a plan to expose play. her for being a spoiled brat at her upcoming birthday party, which happens at, wouldn't you know it, the local Freddy Who would have thunk? Pizza. His plan, well, it's not a particularly good one. And if I have to fault this story for one thing, it's that the mechanics of how it all works is kind of confusing. So stay with me here. At Freddy's, they have this big money booth. Money you know, booth. Oh, booths. I remember. Remember those things? Tickets around you, Chuck you E. Cheese. Them, you walk away with whatever you're able to capture. I never got in, in one though. There's a special ticket that allows you to win the top prize in the restaurant. A Yarg Foxy. Basically Yarg. a large Foxy doll with extra hook swinging action. Okay, so it seems Damn. like Hazel really wants to win the Yarg Foxy. So Alex sabotages her chances by taking out the special winning ticket before she gets wow. in. Except she does win. By some weird, magical, unexplained miracle, the ticket winds up what? in her hair and she wins the foxy doll the twist though is that she didn't want to win it for herself she wanted to win it for alec you see alec secretly loves freddy's pizzeria but he never gets to have his birthday there and of all the characters he loves foxy the most even pretending to be yarg foxy around yarg. the house when no one's looking but when Aww. hazel tries to give it to him as a sign of friendship as a way to try and finally make him happy all it does is infuriate him once more bested by his perfect sister. Alec loses it, he rips the Foxy doll and runs off to the storage room crying. Once Not there, nice. he meets a lonely Freddy doll. A hey small, boy. free-roaming version of everyone's favorite two toes. bear. The bear hypnotizes him and then body swaps with him, leaving Alec's consciousness trapped forever in the doll's body while an AI with his face roams free, unbeknownst to his family. Oh. So forgive me the detailed plot description, but I needed to get all that in because Alec's story, strangely enough, closely matches what we see happening in FNAF 4's Crying Child. Now, I don't think Alec mm. is the Crying Child by any means. There are just way too many differences He's here. definitely going to have to sell me on this. How similar these two stories are because the parallels seem intentional. They seem to be inviting us to compare these two stories. So let's do exactly hmm. that. Just like in FNAF 4, there's a countdown to a birthday party happening at Freddy's at the end of the week. Though in this case, it's a sister's party and not his. Speaking of the sister, Alex's younger sister Hazel is described as being cute and perfect, with a lot of emphasis being placed on her green eyes and her curly yellow hair. An important physical description considering Elizabeth, the you girl right. who would go on you to possess right. baby and who we assume is crying child's sister and owner of this room in FNAF 4 is also... So blonde, it feels odd to go back eyes. to FNAF 4 fact, with this theory. Is brought up a lot. An unusual Very nostalgic. Throughout the Lonely Freddy story. Quotes like this. Alec had never noticed the bear's eyes before. Had they always been that blue? And again, its eyes were as blue and deep as an ocean trench. Over 13 times our eyes in this story uh, qualified uh. by their color. Which is hey. worth noting considering that a lot of the other short stories thus far in Fazbear Frights have had themselves pretty sparse character descriptions. But this this one, for some reason, really chooses to emphasize the fact that Alec and Hazel have green eyes and that Lonely Freddy has blue eyes, which, if you have an obsessive level of knowledge of the series, should ring a few alarm bells. In Sister Location, eye color was a huge deal, so much so that I did a whole theory about it back when Sister Location came out, yeah, where see, the very nostalgic. had blue eyes until she scooped a oh, bit and her God, eyes right. were green. And here we have something very I was thinking like where was he going with this from the story Alex stared hard into the blue eyes of lonely Freddy eyes that had burned through his soul and he searched for answers of his own but he only came away with more questions because the blue eyes of the bear had suddenly turned a light green end quote 
And again, in this quote, all Alec could see was the bear as its newly green eyes bore through him. So we've got a party, a sister. Why is there so much talk about eyes? It's weird. A sister and some eyes. But obviously there's got to be more, right? Alec, when his plan fails, runs off to hide in the storage room crying. <laughs> similar to the crying child being locked in the storage room in FNAF 4. And in general, Alec is just a sulky, moody kid who, similar to our crying child, both loves and hates Freddy Fazbear's. Alec, in the book, secretly loves the restaurant and its characters, but he also hates it because he only gets to go when it's for his sister, which makes him bitter and angry to be there. It's hmm. a lot like the conflicted feelings our crying child has for the restaurants who clearly likes the franchise i mean he has all the toys in his room and yet while he's there he's clearly miserable we're not exactly sure why but he does have mixed feelings about this franchise kind of like me that is okay. hashtag relatable i feel seen crying child but to me one of the most telling connections between this story and the game is the yarg fox <laughs> toy when hazel tries to give the toy to alec alec freaks out and rips the toy's arm off it's a small detail, but one that immediately made me think of the foxy that's in the crying child. He's missing his head, not the arm. Plush with one very specific feature. A feature that has never, never, never gotten explained. Its head was pulled off. So we have ourselves two foxy plushies, both with a body part ripped off in some way, in the possession of a kid who both loves and hates Freddy's, that winds up locked in a storage room crying, attends a birthday party, and has themselves a green-eyed sister with blonde hair. It is just an oddly specific I... series of parallels okay. that are almost <laughs> so precise, they're inviting us to compare them. It's actually a bit uncanny. Alec in this story is almost like a fusion of the crying child and his brother. You see, crying child for all the reasons that we just talked about, but also the older brother because, well, he's a mean older brother to his sister. And his hey, favorite character that's is not Foxy. Nice. So much so that he pretends to be Foxy around the house. Just like we see the older brother doing to torment the crying child in FNAF 4. Again, it's not exactly the same. There are plenty okay, of differences where's this going? scenarios, but there are a lot of parallel details. Almost like alternate universe versions of roughly the same series of events. Isn't so that what the books are of this have to supposed to be? Friend Fredbear? Well, I believe that all of these parallels with FNAF 4 are intentional. They're drawing lines between the two stories, inviting us to compare them. And oh. when you do that, it becomes undeniable that psychic friend Fredbear is a lonely Freddy. To understand why, let's start with the book. This is how lonely Aren't the Freddy books supposed to be alternate quote, universes from the games? But the weirdest parts of it were harder to define. The bear stood stiff, almost at attention. Its eyes stared straight ahead at the stage, but Alec had the strangest feeling that it was still watching him. End quote. So a small Freddy Creepy. toy with eyes that watch you as you move around the room. Definitely sounds like what Psychic Friend does as we maneuver our way through the FNAF 4 minigames. His white eyes just move around with us wherever we go. We're also told that the lonely Freddy is able to free roam in order to follow the kids around. Again, explaining why he shows Isn't up that in neat? practically every screen of the FNAF 4 minigames. It is literally designed to be a moving surveillance camera. I mean, That's maybe kinda, it can't disguise itself as a weird. flower or whatever, but just chalk that one up to Scott's artistic license. Later in the story, we're told what the purpose of the Lonely Freddy is. Quote again, At Freddy Fazbear's, we believe that no child should What's have to voice? experience the wonder and delight of Freddy Fazbear's family pizzeria alone. Using patented technology and a touch of that Freddy Fazbear magic, Freddy will learn all about your child's favorite So that boy in the like teaser looks really different from what... Close to their mom. Is it just me, or does Lonely Freddy sound he's like supposed to look like? unwanted kid? It's a mechanical last resort, as in, no one wants to play with this kid, so here's a machine that'll do it instead. End quote. This is a device specifically designed to become a friend to sad and lonely children. Children just like FNAF 4's crying child. Children just like Alec. And in a line, again drawing parallels between the two stories, we get ourselves this, quote, If there was ever a kid who would have been foisted onto a lonely Freddy at a foisted. birthday party, it would have been Alec. Now, this huh. is important. One of the strangest things about psychic friend Fred Bear in the game was his knowledge of crying eh. child's innermost thoughts, saying things like, remember what you saw, and he hates you. It's the whole reason I started calling him psychic friend Fred Bear in the first place. The toy's knowledge of what was going on inside the boy's head was just uncanny. Just one of the many strange things about this character. One of the many strange things about this character that gets an explanation via Lonely Freddy's behavior in the story. 
The bear approaches Alec in the storage room and starts asking questions. Questions that start to turn serious. Quote from the book. I've been waiting for you, friend, the bear said. We should be best friends. It's a stuffed animal, Alec told himself. It's a stuffed toy. What's your favorite color? My favorite color is green. What's your favorite food? Green. Zanya. Then the bear's questions took a different Zanya. Thing. What would you do if you were asked to hurt someone you love? It felt like the bear was reaching its soft now, plush wait a paw into his very soul and extracting the answers he kept the most hidden. And it was doing it so effortlessly. So the Lonely Freddy is a stuffed bear designed to act as a surveillance camera on kids. Follow him around, talk to the sad, lonely ones, and then extract information from them to become their friend before eventually body swapping with them. I mean, each and every one of those details, minus the whole body swap thing, is <laughs> something that we see the psychic That's kind of a big part of the do. book, though. There is one last detail that I haven't included yet. The Freddies are controlled by a man who works in a private back The man office. behind the slaughter. Again, the party prepper turned a dial on her hip-clipped walkie-talkie and pressed her finger to her headset. Someone get Daryl to do a Lonely Freddy demo. Daryl's on break. The fact that there's someone it, behind Dale. the scenes controlling these devices in the book is a direct callback to the secret private room from Sister Location. The one where there were surveillance cameras watching the FNAF 4 house, guarded by the password 1983. It was in that room that we saw a psychic friend Fredbear for the first and only time in a non-8-bit setting. There, on the desk, was a short little plushie mm -hmm. with his white little surveillance eyes and a walkie-talkie right next to him, coinciding with this scene from the book. So, there you have it, Fred. The official name of Psychic okay. Friend Fred Bear is Wait, Lonely Freddy. I'm... It's not quite as fun, but I guess it's easier for me to type, so that's a plus. It's a camera system controlled by someone hidden in a back surveillance. I'm so confused about what this video is supposed to, to be. And talk and maybe even hypnotize and body swap. Now the question that we're left with is who was controlling it in FNAF 4? If I mean, you put this like into a part 3 map pad. Afton, right? Who else would be doing it? But the bigger question is why? Why would he be doing all this just to watch what we assume is his own son? And then over in Bookland, the question is whether all book of this land. is intentional. It's book time. It seems like the employees don't actually know book the true time. nature of these robots. So is this an AI roaming around? Or was a normal Lonely Freddy swapped out for one with body God, snatching like abilities? That one seems like the most likely scenario considering in story number three out of stock the yes. plush trap chaser yes, is chasers. swapped with an evil one with human body parts so maybe william afton or some of his people in this book universe are slowly seeding out evil animatronics into the world to run as little test cases also since i'm wrapping up my discussion of fetch here something else for you to chew on at hazel's birthday party there's a girl named charlotte a girl who shares a name with the child that we know goes on to possess the puppet a girl who in this story is any descriptions accidentally eats some and then spends the rest of the party oh. vomiting. Could this actually give us an explanation for why Charlotte in the games would end up outside of the party, outside of the restaurant when we see her in FNAF 6 before she eventually gets killed and Wait, turned into a Wait, why would she puppet? be outside when be. she's throwing up? Thought that I'm throwing out there into the universe for everyone to pick up. Go to the bathroom, man. Anyway, it's time to look ahead because based on the descriptions, it's books number 4 and 5 coming out later this year that seem like they may hold the biggest lore reveals yet. In book 4's description, we see that one of the main it's been a while since I've the read these Susie. descriptions. She also has herself a dog. Susie is almost guaranteed yes, to be yes, confirmed yes, as our yes. fruity maid girl and our first ever victim, the one who goes on to possess Chica. I we was also the know first. That one of the book four stories will be about Pete everything. and his younger brother who, quote, get in a fight in the wake of their parents' divorce and fall prey to a gruesome curse. Huh. Two brothers with divorced parents that have some <laughs> blood curse on their family. You don't. Seems like it could you be don't say. Where our crying child and Foxy bro getting wrapped up in the cycle of serial killing their father started decades prior. And then flipping over to book number five's description, quote: In room 1280 of Heracles Hospital, something evil is keeping a man alive. A man yes. with gruesome burns all over his body yes. and an iron will to live. Sounds a lot yes. like good old buddy William. Or it could be the aftermath of the FNAF 6's restaurant burning. With that being the last book yes. in the Fazbear Fright series, I'd expect that one to tie up a lot. Of God, I hope there's pieces. more. Speaking of loose ends, by the way, I hate them. That is why this show yeah. exists. To get rid of narrative loose ends. To tie them up. Put them neatly and organized back on the I feel like a shelf. sponsor's so you know coming in. Really appreciate? Wait. What doesn't have loose ends? Wireless ears. No! Okay, so I'm a little confused here. He didn't Matt say that this is just comparing the two? Comparing the similarities between the crying child story and Alec's story But then he goes on to say that the crying child or not the crying child my, my bad 
that Psyche Friend Fred Bear is called Lonely Freddy, right? So why... I'm just, I'm just kind of confused about where this theory was heading. It is interesting. There are a lot of similarities between the two stories, but I'm just trying to figure out whether this was a comparing video or if it was a lore video piecing the two together and saying that Lonely Freddy is Psyche Friend Fredbear or if he is just comparing them. I'm not sure which one it is anymore. There you have it, friends. The official name of Psychic Friend Fred Bear is Lonely Freddy. It's not. Okay, so there he's saying that Psychic Friend Fred Bear is Lonely Freddy. But earlier on, he was just comparing the two stories. So I'm, I'm just. I, maybe I've missed something. Maybe I misheard him. But I'm. I, to truly understand why I think these two are connected. Connected, not like filling in the pieces of puzzle I, I don't know I don't know I will admit this is an interesting video he makes a lot of interesting points but I'm just I'm just confused on the conclusion maybe I misheard something but for right now I'm not entirely sure what this theory was supposed to be because the books and now correct me if I'm wrong because I'm almost positive you guys will the books are supposed to be an alternate universe, right? F from the games. That's what Scott originally said in that Steam post. They're not direct links, but they're similar. They're different stories from the universe, you know? So, the these two stories having similarities is the point of the story. Am, am I wrong? I, I don't know. It is, they, there are some interesting points, but I feel like, I just, I don't really know where Matt was going with this, so that's gonna be it for, for me today. <laughs> Again, an interesting theory, it's just the conclusion is a little weird, but then again, maybe it's my fault, maybe I misheard something, I'm not entirely sure. But this was Game Theory, FNAF for the Body Snatchers. Thanks for watching this episode, and I'm pretty sure 1.35 a.m., the third Fazbear Freight book comes out in May. Actually, let me double check. Yes, May 5th, 2020. So it's actually, god, it's, it's actually sooner than I thought, oops. So yeah, we have that to look forward to. But for right now, thank you. So much for watching another reaction to game theory, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.